Sinead, it's 2008 Olympics, famous crash in the final, and I'm guessing that's the first time a lot of non-cycling people would have been aware of you. Um, it's a very crashy sport, isn't it? Yeah, BMX is uh, quite a courageous sport in terms of it's quite a, a lottery kind of sport, if you will. It's kind of like unpredictable. People kind of say BMX racing is like wacky car racing. Like as soon as that gate drops, it's madness for, you know, for 40, 42 seconds of the lap. Um, and Beijing was kind of a guess for me. I've been racing for many years up to that point, but it was the first time that the non-cycling community had sat, kind of witnessed who I was. Um, and yeah, kind of impacted with a big with a big bang, so to speak, and crashed out in the last turn. Did you get any stick from people after that? As like, you know, yeah. what's she doing, amateur? Uh, no, luckily I didn't get any. Yeah, it was very the the public was very like like perceived BMX very well, and like I, I guess a lot of people like Sir Chris Hoy himself kind of said, you know, I put my mortgage on it that you were going to win and. And for me, that was, I learned a lot about myself at that Olympics. And I guess it kind of taught me a, a hard lesson and humbled me very quickly that there's no guarantees in life with anything that you do. All you can, all you can control is giving 100% and, you know, the, the result will take care of itself. And unfortunately, the Olympics didn't go to, to plan for me. Well, the year before that did go to plan, you were world champion in the team sprint with Dickie Pendleton. Um, when was the first time you got on a track bike? So the, when I got into track cycling, it was funny because I got into track cycling, I say by accident, but it was to further my BMX like, like success. I wanted to be able to train in the winter. We didn't have an indoor facility. And I knew that in 2007, the Olympics was a year away. So I wanted to get the most kind of experience and started kind of asking people, you know, what's the Olympics like? And then I was like, you know what, this winter, I'm going to kind of commit a little bit of time on the track so I can kind of get all my training in. Um, told me of a new event and within getting on the bike to the World Championships, which was like six weeks, I won the world title um, with Victoria Pendleton in a team sprint. And, and for me, it's just like a bike's a bike. Like everyone's like, oh, wow, like, you know, one of the first people to win BMX World Championship and the track world championship in the same year. But for me, it's just essentially riding the bike. You ride it fast regardless if it's on a, a wooden track or a BMX track. So, yeah, that was my taste of track cycling. And did you define track cycling as enjoyable or just, just a different kind of I think, different vibe altogether? I think the track cycling for me when I was younger was, oh, like in 2007, I was only like 17, 18. I found it quite boring. And the reason why I say that is because I was quite an extreme or like, I like to have like some adrenaline, I like to feel alive. And my sport BMX offered me all of that and more. So then when I did track cycling that I found was like a stripped down version of just for me, essentially it was just pedaling a bike. It didn't offer me what BMX offered me, jumping 40 foot jumps, being in the hustle and bustle of things. But I ended up being relatively good at track cycling. And if I'm good at something and competitive at something, then I kind of enjoy it. So then that kind of led me to want to do more of it. Well, I'm guessing you've never actually broken any bones on the track. Whereas, um, how many bones have you broken doing BMX? Yeah, track cycling was a little bit kinder to my body, I think. In BMX, I'd, I'd broken a bone in, and left to right every single limb in my body, like even in my back, in my neck. And yeah, I've broken many, many bones in the sport of BMX. And that was a good thing about track cycling. It was kind of like, yeah, it wrapped me up in cotton wool a little bit more. Now, you retired at an early age in, in the great scheme of things. And... You struggled, uh, like a lot of athletes do when they, when they make that conversion. How, how dark was it? It was hard, like the transition, and I heard of it, you know, when I was an athlete myself and people were coming to the end of retirement. But I don't know, I just kind of was never, ever thinking about life after sport. And then when it came round, and it came round forcefully in a way, because I kind of got forced to retire. I didn't retire off out of my own will because it was injuries. I was just like completely lost. My identity had been stripped away that I'd kind of, you know, for 20 years of my life, I was Sinead Reed, the BMX rider. And then all of a sudden, Monday morning came, I was a Sinead Reed. And I was like, who is Sinead Reed? And what do I do? And what do I offer society? And the transition was, was hard, like the hardest thing I've ever been through. Um, harder than losses in, in racing, because you know you lose a race, but there's always another one there. When you retire, you're done. That's it. That's life. That's your life, your career finished. So for me, like it just went down a dark path quite quickly. Um, you know, I thought my best friend was a bottle 
um, trying to find the answers in the bottle of, you know, vodka or whatever it was. And it was just like, it was, yeah, it was stripping me even more of my identity. And, and I had to get real with myself and, and get the help that I needed. And how long did it take you to, to reach that conclusion? And, and who helped you get back on track? It was, it was, yeah, like I said, it was the darkest time. Like I, I was suicidal. I didn't want to be here. It wasn't lightly that I speak of, of, you know, mental health issues and say, you know, oh, I know what it's like to be a bit down and a bit depressed. I know what it's like to be at the rock bottom. And when you're at the rock bottom, this, this, well, it can, you're in your at rock bottom, you can either go one or two ways. You can climb yourself straight out the top of it, or you can go deeper and darker. And that can, you know, lead on to, to other unpleasant places. And for me, I had a great, I was with my partner at the time and she identified I needed help. And I was like, no, it's just circumstance. I'm only drinking because, you know, I'm, I'm a bit depressed. I've just retired. But the more, t as t more time went on and the length of time I was drinking and, and the more I was becoming isolated and not, you know, I wasn't, I was, wasn't becoming, I wasn't a good person. I just become really in my shell. Um, she said it's kind of a, it's about either you go to AA and get help or you be, well, basically the relationship's done and you can, I can't sit there and watch you destroy your life anymore. You've gone from being at the success that you're at to this like person I don't recognize. Um, so I was like, right, okay. So I, I said, I'll go to AA, I'll get you off my back. I'll show everyone I'm not an alcoholic. Um, I just like a drink. And, and I, so I threw the towel in, like what, I was going quite a bit, heard what I needed to hear, identified with what I needed to identify with. And I was like, yeah, I am an alcoholic. And I can say now, like I say that, and it's probably one of the best things to have happened to me in terms of the transition of not knowing who I was, trying to find it in a bottle of alcohol, then landing myself in AA because 12 step program, we follow in, in the principles of our, our program. It changed my life. It, I, you know, it was an inside job. Alcohol was just a result of what was going on in the head. Um, but when I stopped drinking and started working on myself um, and not working on myself for vanity reasons and looking good, but actually fully working from the inside out, my life just got better and better. And yeah, I mean, like the life that I live now is rich. And when I say it's rich, it's rich with happiness. It's rich with joy. I've got freedom. I can do anything and be anything that I want to be. I just can't pick up alcohol. And if that's the only thing I can't do, I'm sound with that. Like I've been happy with that from the day I got my freedom back. Um, so yeah, that's kind of essentially what happened to me after retirement. And I get the feeling you're, you're A, right back on top of your game in, in, in so many respects in your life, but B, you're, you kind of want to help others that, that are suffering, you know, similar kind of yeah. feelings. I'm in a place where I never, th I thought happiness was winning bike races and, you know, and everyone going, oh, amazing, good on you, you're world champion and all that. That's superficial to me. That was a, my career was a part of my life. It wasn't my life. And I didn't, I got them two things very blurred. Like I just thought that was me. Um, but the life that I live now and how happy I am now, like it's just, I never believed I could be so content and at peace within my own body and my own head. And like the biggest driving force for me now is, you know, it's, it's, it's to have obviously enough money in the bank to pay the bills but it's to help others. Like essentially my life is about helping others. Like if that's with mental health or that's with fitness or with anything, like for me, I just think life's hard enough. And essentially life's about helping others and helping others grow to be better human beings. And if we could all just be that little bit kinder, it's cliche, you know, the, the things are going around on Instagram and social media all be that little bit kinder, but it's so true. Like just, I remember being in the, in the dark depths of where I was at and just someone smiling at me and asking how my day was, that just was like, wow, that person's just asked how I am. Like, and for me now, I, I generally go out the door each morning and I, I make a conscious effort just to say, oh, you know, I'll speak to anyone. Like it, at the velodrome when I rate, when I was at, on the track program, I was friends with the cleaners, the dinner ladies. It didn't matter who they were to me. Like a person's a person and deserves that time. So I think it just... All of what happened and the transition from an athlete into, into the normal world, um, AA kind of just brought all that together and, and allowed me to have the freedom and, and I guess the, the sense and direction of who I am and what I like.